we come to Acts chapter 3. It says, Peter and John were going up to the temple about, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the time when everybody prayed. I live in Budapest, and um, in Budapest, we have a lot, a lot of beggars, a lot of people who are standing on the corner asking for things. And I, I spend a lot of time going in and out of the city and going around the city. And one thing I notice is that you see the same beggars at the same places. And there, there are good places to beg and there are bad places to beg. There are some places where you'll probably get some money, and there are some other places where, well, you probably won't get much money. This beggar had a great place to beg because people were going into the temple and out of the temple. They were feeling religious. They were thinking about what they need to give up to God, and they knew that one thing they needed to do is they needed to give to the poor. And, you know, sometimes I see a man begging, and he's a young man, and he looks like a healthy man, and I'm thinking, why should I give him any money? Why doesn't he work? Why doesn't he get a job? But maybe there's an old woman who's bent over, or maybe there's somebody with no legs, or somebody with a woman with little children, and you think, well, maybe they can't get a job. They can't walk, or they have to take care of children, so maybe you will give them some money. Well, here's someone who... Uh, who can't walk. As a matter of fact, verse 2 says that he was never able to walk. It says it was a man who had been lame from his mother's womb, and he was being carried along, and he, he used to be set down every day at the gate of the temple. The temple had many different gates, and this was the gate called the Gate Beautiful. And here he would beg. Now, here's what you need to know about this. Because people went to the temple all the time, there were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people who had seen him. And what that means is that there were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people in Jerusalem who knew he couldn't walk. So if a time came when he could walk, those hundreds of people, or even those thousands of people, would know this man has never been able to walk, but now he can walk. Why can he walk now? What happened? So if this man were healed, it would be tremendous publicity, positive publicity for the gospel. It would be glory for Christ if this man were healed in Christ's name. Now, when the man saw Peter and John walking toward him, verse 3, and they were about to go in the temple, he began begging them for money. So Peter and John uh, stared at him, and, and Peter said, look at me. And I'm sure the man thought, well, if he tells me to look at him, he's surely going to look at him, he's surely going to give me some money. So the man was expecting to receive some money. And, um, but Peter says in verse 6, I do not possess silver and gold. This is a story I told yesterday of Thomas Aquinas walking with the leader in the church in Rome, and the leader in the church in Rome says, we can't say that anymore, silver and gold have I none. But Thomas Aquinas says, that's true, we do have silver and gold now in the church, but we also can't say, get up and walk. We also can't heal. So Peter says, look, I don't have any money, so I can't give you something that I don't have, but I do have something that I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. And Peter grabbed him by the hand, and he raised him up. And the man leaped, and he began to walk, and he entered the temple with them. This is a very famous phrase in English Christianity. And there's a song which says this, walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Christ is in heaven. The four Gospels record 35 miracles that Christ worked. We know He worked many, many more, but we have the record of 35. 
Christ has been crucified. Christ has been buried. Christ has been raised from the dead. And Christ has ascended into heaven. But the apostles are still working miracles in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. His ankles were strengthened. He walked and he leaped and he praised God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they were taking note is he's the one we know. He's the one that that we knew, um, that we knew everything about. We knew that this person could not walk, and now he is walking. Now remember what I told you. Peter and John have shown power, great power, but they didn't have any money. One thing that tells us is that they did not they did not use their power to get money. There are teachers and preachers in the world today who told who will tell you that if you will have faith, you will have money. Well, James says that God has made the poor of this world to be rich in faith. So James says just the opposite. But remember what I said in the last two days. Um, how do we get power? One way we get power is that we refuse, we say no to other kinds of power. How do we get spiritual power? By renouncing, by saying no to all other forms of power, including financial power. That's hard because we all want financial power. They didn't have any financial power. They didn't have any money. But they could heal the lame. They could make somebody walk who couldn't walk. It must have been an amazing thing. It must have been an amazing spectacle in Jerusalem. Okay, that's the story of Acts 3, the story of the lame man. Acts 2 is the story of the spirit who came down. Acts 3 is the story of the man who got up. Okay? That's the way you can remember it. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed over 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at www.tvseminary.com. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.